they didn't have to, you know. That revolution, declaring all men are created equal, with law for the people, by the people, and of the people, with freedom to speak and sing and write without fear, freedom to believe, to pursue our dreams with small steps or giant leaps. They didn't have to do that, but they did. And we took it, we the tired, the poor, the huddled masses yearning to breathe free. And we breathed. We ran, daring to scale the greatest heights of human achievement. This is who we are, this land, this people. We stumble, yes, but we get up to give our children and their children this gift, this happiness, this new birth of freedom. All right, good night. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Mark Kerr, the Center for Self-Governance co-founder and instruction development director. Thanks for coming to the speaker series tonight. The title of our uh, talk tonight is Politics Has Failed, America Will Not. And I am extremely excited to have with us tonight uh, from the Sutherland Institute, the president of the Sutherland Institute, Boyd Matheson. Um, he is joining us to talk about the Sutherland Institute as well as his partnership with Scott Rasmussen, who wrote the book Politics um, Has, uh, sorry about that, Has Failed, um, uh, um, America Will Not. So uh, with that, I'd like to... Uh, Sorry, guys. Uh, I'd like to welcome Boyd uh, to uh, our speaker series tonight. Boyd, thanks for taking your time out tonight and, and joining the Center for Self-Governance speaker series. Uh, it's great to be with you, Mark. Great to be part of uh, an important dialogue with a great group of people. Um, so, uh, so, Boyd, uh, what we wanted to do is uh, kind of find out first, you know, tell us a little bit about the Sutherland Institute and um, how you got involved with it, and, and then we'll get into your relationship with Scott and the book he wrote. Okay, fantastic. Uh, the Sutherland Institute is a, is a conservative public policy think tank based here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, mm -hmm. Our focus is primarily on free market economy, civil society, and community-driven solutions. And so we have a great team of researchers and analysts and communication specialists uh, really focused on how do we how do we change the dynamic? How do we make sure that the principles and the policies uh, are those that are going to create the most freedom? That are going to really enable people to do what they do best: to raise their families, to uh, to build their communities, and to make a difference in the world. So that's that's our thrust. Uh, I'm sort of a, a backdoor entrance into the uh, political and public policy ranks. Uh, I actually started doing a business consulting for about 25 years. And, and then uh, when we moved back to Utah after uh, living away for a while, uh, we moved a couple houses down from an attorney uh, whose name happened to be Mike Lee. And uh, we got to know the Lees and Senator Lee ran for the Senate in uh, 2010, asked me to help with his communication and strategy. And of course he won, life was good. Uh, I very wisely went back to business consulting. Uh, and then about a year later, I was sitting in the airport in Salt Lake City getting ready to fly to Bangkok to give a leadership speech. And uh, Senator Lee now called me and uh, we were chit chatting and catching up. And the next thing I knew, I could hear him in stereo. And I said, where are you? He says, oh, I'm at the airport waiting for a flight. And I turned around and we were literally sitting back to back at the gate. Uh, and as my wife said, that's when he sucked me into the vortex and asked me to be his chief of staff. And so we wow. did that for four years and uh, then uh, came back to Utah and uh, thought I had a good plan. Uh, it was one of those, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plan. And a few <laughs> weeks later, Sutherland Institute called and asked if I'd the great team. So here I am. Well, could you, could you tell us a little bit about some of the things that uh, the Sutherland Institute is, is doing or has done in the past? You bet. Uh, so much of the, the work is really helping to elevate the dialogue. We, we live in a, a time with when often the, the strident voices on both ends of the political scale, uh, regardless of the issue, and those, those loud and strident voices, those are, the, those are the folks that, you know, blow up your Facebook page and melt down your Twitter feed. 
and and they often keep us a safe distance from having the conversations we need to have to improve our communities and uh, so we we foster that it's it's one of the things we really take a great pride in is bringing people together to talk about big ideas to discuss uh, where we agree where we don't what we can do uh, and, and moving that forward so we like to kind of consider ourselves to be an idea factory uh, so we do that in the areas of education uh, we've been very involved in the public lands issues which is which are very big here in the state of utah with the uh, almost two-thirds of our land being controlled by the federal government uh, we're in a lot of those national monument and antiquities act uh, conversations along with a host of things we've actually just uh, recently done a study uh, called the family prosperity index uh, which is fascinating it, it actually focuses on the family not just as a social engine that's what we normally think of family as a social engine but we actually look at it in this uh, index as an economic engine uh, and that's a very been a really fun discussion to have with people across the country so those are just a few of the areas mark Oh, maybe we've lost your audio there, Mark. It's like you're muted. Uh, guys, so I would encourage you guys to go check out their, their website, uh, sutherlandinstitute.org, and find out what kinds of uh, policies and issues the Sutherland Institute is, is getting engaged in, um, and uh, see, see how you can participate. So, so Boyd, um, you were the chief of staff with Mike Lee, um, you're the president of the Sutherland Institute. So how did you get involved with Scott Rasmussen? Isn't he, he's like the, does the Rasmussen reports, the, uh, the stuff we see on Fox News and other, and other channels uh, across the country. That's right. Yeah, Scott's a, a longtime pollster, although he actually sold Rasmussen uh, polling a few years ago. Uh, and uh, he was actually at, a, at an event. We were down in Florida and I was kind of playing MC and host and moderator. And so I was literally thought I was going to have a 10 minute conversation with Scott, uh, figuring out how he wanted me to introduce him uh, during the event. And he and I started to talk about these, these principles and community driven solutions and what that means and what that looks like and why our, our politics is so broken. Uh, and we ended up talking for several hours. And he said, well, I've got this book idea that I've been working on. Can I send you a few things? Uh, and so he did. And that started a, 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 just a wonderful relationship uh, that ultimately culminated in our publishing uh, of his book, Politics Has Failed, America Will Not. And so what, what does it come down to, bottom line? You guys published his book. What's, what's, what's his book about? Why, why, is it, why should it be important to uh, Center for Self-Governance students or, or even, even people around the country? Yeah, I think, that, I think for everyone around the country, and especially for your students, uh, this is something that will really ring true. And the, the essence is this, that number one, our, our politicians have almost never led in this country. Uh, what happens is community and culture lead and the politicians follow even back to the very beginning. Uh, in Scott's book, we, we highlight the fact that the, even the Declaration of Independence, we celebrate that as such an extraordinary document, which it is, uh, but we need to also remember that it was a lagging document, not a leading document. The Revolutionary War had been going for 18 months before they got around to putting on paper uh, the political version of that. Uh, and while it was a great galvanizing document, for sure, it wasn't a leading document. You have other examples of uh, Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball in 1947. It took Congress 17 more years to get around to doing any kind of meaningful civil rights legislation. Uh, even something simple like Mother's Day. Uh, most people don't realize that Congress voted against having a Mother's Day. Uh, now talk about the ultimate no-brainer. Uh, I, I have seven sisters, a mother, a wife, and three daughters. Uh, if the word mother is in it, the vote is yes, uh, but, but Congress voted no to a Mother's Day. And the, and the sweet lady from West Virginia who had brought this to Washington to honor her mother finally said, well, to heck with you guys in Congress. She went back to West Virginia and she passed Mother's Day in West Virginia in the legislature. And then she went to Maine and then she went to Connecticut and she went to Delaware. And when every state had passed Mother's Day, then Congress boldly stepped up and said, we shall have a Mother's Day. 
So the community and culture lead and the politicians follow. Uh, and so that's really the, the essence of the book is that, so what we've been conditioned to believe is that we need to look to Washington, that Washington is some sort of savior that's gonna waltz in and save us whatever the problem is. And even the fact that the bigger the problem, the more we think we need Washington to solve it. Uh, and it's exactly the opposite. It's community driven solutions. It's this laboratory of democracy that matters. And we have to get back to that we're ever going to move the country forward in a significant way. So, so what you're saying is, is that you, you guys are, w within Scott's book, you guys are focusing on the concept that starting back at the, the most basic level of our existence. Um, and so can you, can you kind of give some examples of what you guys mean by community? Are you talking the individual, the family, my neighbors, um, the, the little town, my county, the region? Maybe, maybe give some, some insight into what kind of layer or leveling that you guys are thinking of. You bet, and it, does, it starts with the individual, and then it's family, and then it's neighborhood, then it's community. So it is all of those things. And, and finding out one, where are we, what matters, and then how do we move it forward. Uh, let me give you one example from here in Utah that's, uh, that I hope is replicated across the country. We, we have a group here uh, called the Other Side Academy. And the other side academy is an alternative to our current criminal justice system. Uh, Joseph Grenny is the founder. He's a, he's a world-renowned business strategist and, and author of the book Influencer, which you should all read as well. Uh, great learning there in terms of how do we influence behavior and, and make lasting change. Uh, but the vision that, that Joseph Grenny had with the other side academy was similar to Delancey Street uh, down in San Francisco. So here's how it works. It's, it's community driven. Uh, they, they took over uh, the old, it was actually the original mayor's mansion, this large building in, in Salt Lake City. And they have their 65 convicts, people who have been in and out of the criminal justice system. Uh, most of the students, as they call them, uh, most of the students have been arrested 15 to 20 times. Most of them have actually spent at least seven to 12 years actually inside of prison, and they're about to be sentenced to go back for another round. And so this is how it works. They first have to convince the judge who's about to sentence them to another three to five years in prison that they're ready for change. That's the easy part. Then they have to go to the house and they have to convince all of the students that live there that they're ready for change. And of course, these are, these are people who know all the BS answers because they've been on the street. They've done it. They've lived it, exactly. Uh, and then it, the focus is all on skills, life skills, uh, how to show up on time, how to keep a room clean, how to have a conversation, how to have a disagreement. Uh, so the, the most fascinating part of this, the critical piece of this, is that they are completely self-funded. They don't take a single penny from the federal government, the state government, the local government. One of the ways they fund themselves is they have a moving company. Now, I want you to think about that. <laughs> Selling a moving company of convicts. These are the guys that used to take your big screen TV out of your window and then go sell it at a pawn shop. And now they're, they're gonna take it out and they're gonna wrap it up real nice and deliver it to your, to your new home. Uh, and here's the amazing thing, Mark. They are the number one rated customer service moving company in all of Utah. Wow. Because it has happened at a community level and they're developing these skills. There are no counselors. There are no therapists. There are no guards. There are no ankle bracelets. There are no security cameras. We're teaching them the skills that many of them missed while they were on drugs or while they were on the street or in a gang. Uh, and the results are just phenomenal. They now not only have a moving company, they have a food truck, they have a lawn care business. They just opened a beautiful, thrift store uh, here in Salt Lake City. Uh, two other quick examples of that, Mark. So one of the skills that they realized that these people had missed during their time on the street was that they didn't know how to sing to old people. <laughs> so they brought in a high school choir teacher, taught these guys how to sing, and then during the holiday season last year, they traveled all over the county singing at every old folks' home they could find. And they've become part of this 
community. The, the neighborhood loves it. They've cleaned up the entire community. Uh, and, and of course, what has happened is as they have had so much success, government has tried to come in and regulate it. <laughs> because if it's working, we, we better make sure that we're regulating it and controlling it. Uh, and so I actually went to one of the hearings where uh, they were trying to make the case uh, of what they were doing. And the, the bureaucrat behind the desk couldn't wrap his head around it. He said, you're telling me that you have 65 convicts living in this home. These are guys that, you know, couldn't last 10 minutes even inside of prison without getting into trouble or picking a fight or causing a ruckus or, or a serious uh, incident. And you're telling me you've got them there with no security, no guards, no anything. How in the world do you do that? And Joseph Grinney looked at him without missing a beat and said, we asked them. And that was it. So it, it's all about treating them like humans. You know, we send people to prison now so that they can learn how to become better prisoners or better convicts or better criminals or better gang members. Uh, instead of bringing them and positioning them so that when they're done at the other side academy, they will have a set of skills that go everything from basic, you know, manual labor to management. They'll have a place to go, they'll have a job, and they're going back to the old neighborhood. But the, here's the fascinating thing and how it ties in to what you guys do so well, Mark, and that is the key. Joseph Grinney went around the country and looked at other groups that had started similar to his. And those that failed, he was looking for why did they fail? And there were two reasons why uh, groups would fail. One was that they began to accept money from the government and all the strings that go with it. They lost their mission and their soul right. um, government money. And the second was they, in some places, they were regulated to death um, by government. And so that's just one example, Mark, of it's, if you haven't looked up, uh, you, all of your students should check this out. It's the Other Side Academy. Um, and it is a story that can be told and retold and retold because if we want to talk about real criminal justice reform, uh, it's going to happen in the community, and uh, it's going to take this kind of vision uh, to make it happen. Let's see if I can pull this up, uh, Other Side Academy online, and make sure we, uh, there it is, right there. Right there, that's the spot. The, so, the, the, the beautiful <laughs> thing, Mark, just as you're, yeah. as you're pulling that up, so I went and spoke uh, every Tuesday, they do kind of a TED Talk, uh, much like we're doing tonight uh, with their students. And I went and spoke there and you're in this old historic building that was built in the 1800s. And uh, looking around the room, finding these people. And I said, you know, people call this a historic building and it's historic not because of who used to live here, it's because who's here now. And the history that's changing as you get your life together, as you develop the skills so you can be an active, participating, contributing member to your society and your community. Uh, it's just a, a powerful, powerful thing. This, yeah, this is a really powerful example of, of self-governance from the perspective of it starts with yourself, then it, it spreads into your community and you have, this, you have this spectrum of the limited number of people you can engage with. You just, you just at a human level, there's just only so much um, that we can um, uh, do uh, at the human level, uh, let me stop this for a second here. Yeah, and let, let um, me ask why you're why you're grabbing that, Mark. Uh, so here's here's one other interesting example. When they first opened their doors at the Other Side Academy, they accepted some donations uh, from a group, that's the Deseret Industries, which is part of the LDS Church humanitarian effort. And so they took they. Were, you know, they'd received some food and some canned goods and things like that when they started. The interesting thing now is they are actually a net donor to Deseret Industries because when they, go on, <laughs> when they go on a move, someone will say, oh, we're just gonna throw that chair away or we're gonna get rid of that couch. And so the students will take that back, fix it up really nice and then go donate it to Deseret Industries. So now they become a net donor. That's this is this is be very interesting. Uh, like in a, a state like Delaware, for example, where where their particular system of government, the the governor and the Supreme Court Chief Justice have bypassed the Attorney General, 
removed the Department of Justice from underneath the Attorney General, put it underneath the, the governor, and now they're creating more victims in the state of Delaware through opioid use, criminal activity, uh, cross-border interstate commerce, drug uh, paraphernalia, these kinds of things. And so uh, what an interesting experiment this would be to combat or to compete with what you described in the committee where the bureaucrat was just, their head exploded. How is this possible? So how would you, I, I'm kind of curious how you would respond to that, Boyd. How, 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 would, how do you convince the bureaucrats that it's okay that we eliminate villains, that we don't need more victims in order to create more hero government? How, how, do, you, how do we get to that point? I mean, this is such a great idea, but it seems like in the 21st century, a lot of our students would ask, it seems like a very difficult hurdle to overcome. Yeah, so, so I think this is, this is something that's really critical, Mark, and I'm really passionate about this, uh, because sometimes I fear that we underestimate the power of what one person can do. Uh, there's, a, there's a great quote by William Morris, uh, and I, I always paraphrase it slightly. Uh, he says, one person with an idea in their head is in danger of being called crazy. <laughs> two, people with, two people with the same idea might be foolish, but not crazy. 10 people with the same idea and they start to act. A hundred people and others start to take notice. A thousand and that very government person you just described shudders. Ten thousand and they can change the course of a community. A hundred thousand and they can change the course of a nation. And why only a hundred thousand? Why not a hundred million or more? And it's, it's you and I who have to answer that question. So, so first and foremost, never underestimate the power of one voice and one person willing to engage. If you can take your one person and make it two, uh, you're, you're on your way. Uh, and so that's the first thing we have to remember is it's always been, it's always been not just the minority, but the minority of the minority that moves the nation all the way back to the beginning. You know, it wasn't a majority of the colonists who decided that it was worth it to, to battle for freedom. It was a minority of the minority and, and that group when marshaled and focused, uh, do great things. And, and sometimes I think, Mark, we, we run out of energy before we run out of opportunity. And so we, we have to be, we have to function from a position of strength and be confident in our principles uh, because our principles work. Our principles have lifted more people out of poverty, have fueled more dreams and, and driven more innovation than any set of principles in the history of the world. And so we need to function. Sometimes I fear that we, we kind of cower in the corner or we kind of shrug our shoulders and say, ah, you can't fight City Hall. Uh, you can. Uh, there, there's no room for, for shoulder shrugging in the, in the world today. We need a lot more shoulder squaring and saying, yeah, I'll, I'll take on that conversation. I'll have that debate. I'll showcase these principles uh, because I know they work. Uh, and then I just add uh, to kind of wrap that thought. We often say that we, we stand on the shoulders of the giants who went before us. And we need to remember that the only reason we can stand on their shoulders is because they were willing to square them. They were willing to step up and, and speak out and even stand alone if necessary to, to move it forward. Yeah, they really did pick up the yoke and, and move forward. Um, so um, very, very wise uh, advice to us. Um, so in relationship to Scott's book, Politics Has Failed, America Will Not, you've given us kind of a, an example of, of one of these community-based solutions. What other, what other concepts or, or uh, uh, targets does, does Scott take with his book? So the, in today's world, it's a very target-rich environment. Uh, That's right. You could take on just about any portion uh, of society, whether it's the opioid epidemic, uh, whether it's education, uh, all of those, we're, we're just better off when those things are happening closer to home and, and to that small group, as you described, Mark, um, where people can actually be involved. Uh, you know, we always talk about elections and the most important vote that most of us will cast in whatever the next election is will be who's on the local school board, uh, right. who's in the local race, 
uh, that's going to have far more impact on our lives than a, a presidential vote or a, a vote for a member of Congress. Um, and, and part of it, too, Mark, and, and Scott covers this really eloquently in, in the book, is that by, it's not just about it's not just about cutting big government or even fixing broken government. It's as, as government is smaller, we create bigger citizens and far more heroic communities because those, those are the real heroes in our country. You know, it's that school teacher days after to help the, the student who's struggling. It's the neighbor helping neighbor. It's the, it's the fifth grader who stands up to a bully for a class. Uh, that's where America happens. And uh, again, one of the things Scott really paints in the book is, is making sure that we just stop looking to Washington for, for all of these things. It's, it's Washington's part of the problem, uh, not part of the solution there. And, and the interesting thing is in these laboratories of democracy within the states, now this is an interesting thing regardless of where people fit on the political spectrum. Uh, it's been interesting uh, since President Trump took office. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, liberals who have suddenly, you know, found religion in uh, federalism, and yeah. let's let's push it back to the states. And, right, and that, that's a good thing for all of us. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. In the like in the state of California, they they want to they want to secede. Well, not all of them, but many of them are trying to secede from the union. Um, uh, of course, now they have to change their state constitution in order to do that, but. Uh, it's interesting that they, they they go back towards the concept of, of federalism. How would you um, uh, so in 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 respect to the founders' creation of a federal system of government? Then, what role would uh, would you or or would you say Scott is um, advocating for uh, for the for Washington D.C. in terms of in terms of involvement in community or? statewide or even or just nationally yeah it, it, it's really article one section eight uh, yeah, territory true. where there's there's a very limited number of things that the federal government should be doing uh, I, with senator lee he would always you know kind of tick through the list of you know the things that the federal government is supposed to do in terms of weights and measures and copyrights and patents and military and immigration those things uh, but then he would always make sure that he ended uh, letters of mark and reprisal uh, which of course were <laughs> basically the license to be a pirate in the name of the uh, of the american people and uh, he would always say i'm i'm before i finish my time in this era, i'm going to get a letter of mark and reprisal to come onto his pirate ship and, uh, and go have an adventure uh, but really very limited very few things um, I do think one thing that's important, though, Mark, is uh, Abraham Lincoln got it right. You know, he said the, the proper role of the federal government was to lift artificial weights from all shoulders, to clear the path of laudable pursuit for all, to give all an unfettered start and a fair chance in the race of life. And so does government have a role? Yeah, they do. It's limited. It's small. Uh, it, it's more, you know, that level playing field as opposed to equal results uh, that we often hear uh, from some here in the world today. Uh, because again, as I said, when we have smaller government, we have bigger citizens and, and more heroic community. That's that's uh, really fantastic uh, that that there's a push uh, being t leaning people towards their community again, and I think that 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 crosses political boundaries it's it's a nonpartisan concept um so um with with that do you, do you have any other um before we take any questions anything else about uh, scott's book and the sutherland institute that you want to that you didn't get a chance to tell us before we open it up to questions you know the the big thing is just for everyone to engage wherever you are whatever you can do uh, do it uh, it's this concept we call where you stand that's what we all need to do. Wherever you are in your life, whatever you can do, given your circumstance, do it. Uh, and that's that's what really moves it all forward. And that's what allows us, uh, you know, I can be pretty pessimistic, uh, having watched Washington up close and personal. Uh, so I, I can be pessimist uh, about our politics, uh, but I am absolutely bullish and confident 
about the future of America. And it's because of community, uh, community driven solutions, because that's what always empowered the nation. And as long as we allow it to continue to drive the nation, uh, we will continue to be an extraordinary place. That's great. Well, um, so um, before we before we wrap this up, folks, want to give you guys an opportunity if you have any questions uh, for Boyd uh, related to the Sutherland Institute, uh, to Scott's book, Politics Has Failed, America Will Not, or even some uh, interesting, uh, such an interesting uh, experiment with the Other Side Academy. So um, let's go ahead and open it up to questions for everybody. All you need to do is unmute yourself. Uh, just remember, uh, respect each other and try not to talk over each other. So we'll open this up to anybody on, on uh, let's see, let's unmute. Does anybody have a question? <laughs> Sounded like somebody, somebody's uh, audio got uh, um, uh, garbled up there. Let me, let me see here. Uh, so I tell you what, why don't we do this? For those of you who do have a question, maybe go ahead and send it into the chat. It sounds like the audio is getting garbled up. Um, and then let me ask you, uh, Boyd, do you, um, would you be open to giving out, say, like your email or way to contact you if folks do have questions or they want to find out more about the Other Side Academy or um, would that be? Yes, absolutely. Happy to. Uh, you can you can reach me direct. Uh, my email address is b o y d at s i freedom dot org. So that is uh, Boyd, and then you said at what? Yeah, s i freedom. There we go. There we go. So everyone can capture that. So it's Boyd at SIF Freedom or SI Freedom, sorry, dot org. Sorry, I'm right. I was writing that with my fingers. Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good, Mark. <laughs> that's right. So that'll be in the recording for, for those for our viewers. You'll be able to reach uh, Boyd uh, to ask more questions about the Other Side Academy, Southern Inland Institute, or uh, uh, Scott's book about politics has failed, America has not. Um, so let's go back to um, uh, to here. Um, does anybody have any questions before we wrap up? I want to introduce you guys to um, the, the website, politicshasfailed.com. This is where you can go to get Scott's book. There's also a video here uh, with Boyd and Scott talking about the book. Uh, highly recommend you guys take some time to go watch this, uh, politicshasfailed.com. Um, and again, uh, so... Boyd Matheson, president of the Sutherland Institute, I just want to say thank you for your time, uh, for spending time with us and introducing us to this concept. This is right up the alley of CSG. Um, and um, folks, if you have time, check out the SutherlandInstitute.org. Um, also, visit politicshasfailed.com and get a hold or copy of uh, Scott's book. And also this great idea for those of you who are watching from Delaware, uh, this is an idea you guys should seriously contemplate, theothersideacademy.com. Check it out and see this might be a way for you guys to compete um, with the, the Supreme Court Chief Justice and the Governor of Delaware. <laughs> be a fantastic concept. I really appreciate you spending the time in introducing that idea to us, Boyd. It's a great idea. Oh, no. my, my pleasure, and it's, uh, it's always a privilege spend time with, with people who are focused on the right principles that lead to the right policy that really create thriving communities. So I, I appreciate what you guys are doing, Mark, and all of your students for their commitment, uh, because it is, this is a, a one person at a time operation as we build uh, and as we create communities and networks uh, that allow us to do more and to create that freedom uh, that we're all looking for. Absolutely. Uh, folks, uh, this, is, um, this is why the uh, CSG Speaker Series is so valuable is because we get to find out great ideas and meet great people doing great things across the country. And, and Boyd, uh, we really appreciate your time tonight. Um, everybody, uh, if you get a chance, make sure you visit the, the Sutherland Institute uh, and their website. 
Um, also stop by um, politicshasfailed.com and be sure to pick up one of Scott's book. Um, you can also um, scroll down here through the screen here. Uh, our last speaker series with, was with Jeanette Finnicum. Her husband was shot uh, in Oregon, uh, and she's trying to change the world at the community level right there in northern Arizona as a result. Um, I really hope you guys would uh, take the time to watch her speaker series. It's absolutely inspiring uh, what she's trying to do to change the world. Um, she doesn't hold a grudge, and um, she has forgiven the folks, and she's going through the healing process. Um, she's not her husband, but she is trying to to make the world a better place as a result. So I encourage you guys to check that out. Um, also, um, all the classes that we're doing online, please check them out. Uh, visit us at info at tncsg.org. You can take our introductory classes, state constitution, regional government, and city county classes, especially that city county classes because it gets you right into your community. Uh, most of these folks who run your government live just down the street from you. It's so worth, it is so worth learning about your city and county government. Um, our foundational civics will teach you about theory of creation and structure of human government, as well as the U.S. government. And then if you're really into it, guys, get into our advanced applied civics course so you can start competing with these folks, building Keep the Republic communities nationwide. All right. Unless there's anybody else have anything else to add, uh, Boyd, thank you again for your time tonight. And um, we're going to get this recorded and sent out to our students around the country. And hopefully they'll get involved with your institute. Check out Scott's book. And I hope I hope some of these states will enter in, uh, introduce the other side academy. Like great Delaware. <laughs> That's great. Right. Thanks. It's great meeting you. Thank you very much for your time. All the best. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Good night.